and welcome back to lesson 6.2. We're continuing on with this normal distribution. Uh, and we ended looking at Z scores and how they compare to items relatively. And now we're going to learn how we can find um, probabilities on the normal curve. And probabilities are essentially what we just did in um, on the using the empirical rule, but they were particular probabilities because um, they are particular spots or standard deviations away from the mean. But now we're gonna talk about being able to find area under a curve at any X value, not just a particular standard deviation X value. Um, and so when we talk about area under the curve, area is really equivalent to probability. Um, and it's also equivalent to percent. So if we call, if we talk about percentiles, percents and percentiles. Okay. Um, so the area that's shaded here is the probability of X being less than a particular value X. And so this shaded area is just going to be the complement of that. Okay, so this is one minus the probability of x being less than x. These add to one. So the area under the curve equals one. Just like um, in the probability distributions that we talked about in chapter four, they were discrete probability distributions, but it always applies the same for any distribution that the probability should always add up to be one. <clears throat> so we're gonna learn how to do some things in Desmos today, it's pretty exciting. So our first example says, if the area to the left of X is 0 0.012, then what is the area to the right? Well, let's, let's think about how we can start drawing these curves. So if we know that the area, if this is the mean, that the area to the left of the mean is 0.5 and the area to the right is 0.5. So if there's an X where the area to the left of that is 0.012, it must be over here somewhere. There must be an X where the area is 0.012, very small. Then what is the area to the right? So they wanna know this area here. So this is, the probability that X um, is greater than X, whatever that X value is, is 0.012. And so this is going to be my one minus 0.012 because it's the complement. So 0 0.988 <clears throat> is this area here. Okay. <clears throat> the golf scores for a school team were normally distributed with a mean of 68 and a standard deviation of three. Find the probability that a randomly selected golfer scored less than 65. So we're going to mark 68. And this happens to be one that we can find by hand. <laughs> Excuse me. Because um, 65 is exactly one standard deviation below the mean because the standard deviation is three. So we know that one standard deviation below the mean is 34%. So that probability, so the probability um, that it's less than that has to be the difference between 0.5 and 34%. So the probably the X is less than, because it said less than 65, it's going to be equal to 0.5 minus 0.34. So that will be 0.16. This, so remember area and probability always gets drawn on the top of the curve and your X values can only be drawn at the bottom, kind of like a number line is how we're envisioning those. 
Okay. The next example has to do with the golf scores again. It says the golf scores again, same, um, same distribution. X is normally distributed with the mean of 68 and the standard deviation of three. Find the probability that a golfer scored between 66 and 70. So again, these are my expectations that you will always mark the mean. And then you don't need to do all of the boundaries of the empirical rule, but just the boundaries of what we're looking for. So they want us to find the probability that X is between 66 and 70. So I'm gonna mark 66, which is to the left of 68, and 70, which is to the right. Now I try to be in a reasonable vicinity, but it's not a big deal if you are like exactly proportionally drawing it how it should, but just to get the big picture. So we wanna know this area here. So this is the cool thing. We're gonna to go to Desmos <clears throat> and we are going to learn how to use a new distribution, which we learned the binomial distribution the other day. Now we're learning the normal curve. This, um, this link is in Canvas. Um, so we're using this curve here. So we have to give it the parameters that we have, which is 68 and three. And then I'm going to, whenever we change that, we have to go and click on the magnifying glass. So it refits the, the curve for us. And we wanna go, um, because we're doing a between, we're gonna click on this cumulative and our minimum is gonna be 66 and our maximum is gonna be 70. <clears throat> and it's right around 0.495. So almost 50% of the data. Take you back and show you my, my paper here. So about 0 0.495. 0 0.495 is the area that falls in between those two values. <clears throat> the next scenario talks about um, in the US, the ages 13 to 55 of smartphone users approximately follow a normal distribution with approximate mean and standard deviation of 36.9 and 13.9. So let's just define that here. <clears throat> Find the 30th percentile and interpret it. Mm, percentile. So the 30th percentile is noted as that. And percentile, remember, it means that it's the X value where 30% of um, people are younger. So it's the age, the X value age. So we know this is our mean here in the center, 36.9. And so 50% is to the left. So we know that the 30th percentile is gonna be somewhere over here. We don't know what that age is. So we're gonna call that age X. So age goes along here. And this is gonna be 0 0.30 for the 30th percentile. And we're just gonna shade this in. And so we are looking for the probability of X less than some X value. We don't know what it is. We're gonna fill this in. Um, is equal to 0.3. So we're actually doing the inverse of what we were just doing. So use the inverse. Okay, so we're going to go to Desmos and use the inverse and see what that looks like. And so you can see here where I saved it, it's right down here. It says in using, use the command below to find the X value that corresponds to a particular area, probability um, or percent. Okay, so the inverse of the normal, and then we have to give it our parameters, which is um, 36.9. 
and 13.9. Okay, and then we want to do 30%, so we have to tell it 0.3. So that comes out to be 29.6. Um, so the age is about 29.6 and so we'll say 30 years old okay. so let's go ahead and interpret that together here <clears throat> so we could say approximately 30 percent of Smart phone users are 30 years old or younger. So it's important to be able to interpret these. The next one says, what is the probability that the age of a randomly selected smartphone user is in the range of 13 to 55 is less than 27 years old? So it's going to be pretty close to what we just did because 27 is over here. So we want to know less than 27. So we know this time our x value is 27. So we're looking for the probability or the area the probability that X is less than 27 equals what? So let's go back to Desmos and we can go up here and change our situation to be the 36.9 and 13.9. And we're doing zero to 27. And that comes out to be 0 0.2342. 0.2342. So we could go back and interpret that. Oh, 23.42% of smart phone users are less than 27 years old. Okay, let's look at our new system. As 2,000 students took an exam, the scores on the exam have an approximate normal distribution with mean mu equal to 81 and standard deviation of 15. Calculate the first and third quartile scores. So think about what a quartile means, similar to a percentile, and we'll go from there. So first and third quartiles. So quartile one is equal to the bottom 25%. So we're going to mark that at 81. And 25% is to the left. So we're going to say it's maybe somewhere around in here, 0.25. And we're going to find the x that goes with that. So we're going to say P of 25, that's the 25th percentile, is equal to the probability of X less than whatever X is equal to 0.25 area. And then let's mark what's going to be the one for the Q3, and then we'll just go find them both at the same time. So Q3 is P75, 75th percentile. 
So let's mark where that is. So that's going to be over here somewhere, X2. And I'm going to shade, that's all of this area, right? All of that area is P is 75. So that one is going to be probably the X is less than something is equal to 0.75. So we're going to go find both of these in Desmos. <clears throat> So we're putting in 81, 11, 81 and 15, oops, 81 and 15, and we're going up zero to, um, we need 25%. So whoops, we need to be doing the inverse norm here, inverse CDF. So 81 and 15 and 0.25. So there is X1 is 70.88. I'll highlight it for you on my paper. I'll show you here in a minute. And then X2 is 75. So that's 75. So that one is. 91.11. So I'll show you those two. <clears throat> so there's X1 at 70.88 right here, and X2 at 91.11. Now, the middle 50% of the exam scores are between what two values? So we want to know the middle 50%. So the middle 50%. We want to know what values x1 and x2 will give me that with the mean of 81. Well, we already know 25% is this way, and this was 75%. So that means this orange, this difference here is the 50%. So it's just these values that we just came up with. So it's the 70.88 and the 91.11. That is our middle 50%, which is kind of cool. Okay. Our last page of um, questions, example here. <clears throat> so it says, a citrus farmer who grows mandarin oranges finds that the diameters of mandarin oranges harvested on his farm follow a normal distribution um, where the diameter, the average diameter is 5.8 cent, uh, centimeters and a standard deviation of 0.24 centimeters. He wants to find the middle 40% of mandarin oranges from his from this farm are between what and what centimeters. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw what we have going here. Okay, so we want the middle 40%. So this one's going to be a little bit trickier. We want the middle. 40%. So we want an X1 and an X2. And we're trying to find these values. So what we could do is find 20% here, right? And then 60% for this marking because we would have 20% and 40%. And then that would be the two boundaries. So we could say X1 is gonna be equal to probably less than whatever that X1 is, is equal to 0.2. And then X2 is gonna be, so probably is less than some X2 is equal to point. 60. 
no, that's not right. 40. Um, it would be 30. This is 0 0.3, 0 0.30, because this would be, and then this is going to be 0 0.70. And then this would be 0 0.30 out here. So it's 0.30 is my boundary here. And then 0. 0.70. <clears throat> okay. This is a point 30. So let's go to this one and find those values. Sorry about that mix up there. Um, so we're going up, we're going to find point 30. And we're doing our average is 5.85. And 0.24. And so the first value, um, the first diameter of the orange mandarin orange is going to be 5.72 centimeters. And the second one, we just have to change this to be 0.70. And so that diameter is going to be 5.976 centimeters. Okay, um, and then the last one is just the 16th percentile. So let's go back and draw that one here and we'll finish up. There are the two, 5.72 and 5.976. Between those two is 40% of the mandarin oranges. 5.72 and 5.976. <clears throat> And the last example says, find the 16th percentile and interpret it in a complete sentence. So there's the mean. And the 16th percentile is going to be an x value where 16% is below that value. So P16 is the probability where x is less than some value x equal to 16%. So let's go check it out. And so this one, we can just go up here and put in 5.85 and 0.24. And we want What did I do here? Point eight five. That one definitely. That should be a comma. Okay. And then we want to go through. Oh, we do need to use this one down here. We need the 0.16. <laughs> uh, I need that. So we did need this inverse one, 0.16. So the diameter is going to be 5.61 centimeters. And I'm just fiddling with that. Okay, so let's go and interpret what this means. Well, it says 16% of all Mandarin oranges harvested at his farm are 5.61 centimeters in diameter or less. And that concludes lesson 6.2. And 
we're moving on to chapter seven. So catch me back for that lesson.